Micah 7 and 8 says, Do not gloat over me, my enemies. Though I have fallen, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. So today I want to talk to you about when we fall. Many times when we go through life, it is often easy to celebrate God when things are going well in our lives. Everything that we prayed for, we received. The job that we asked God for, we finally got it. The children are doing well. Everything in our relationship is going well. We have no problems in our marriages. It's easy to celebrate God. But what happens when we fall? When we go through defeat, when we go through sickness, pain, and suffering in our lives, when we fall into temptation, when we fall into our pains and our suffering, our past wrongs, how do we restore ourselves? How do we come back to a place where God can use us for His honor and for His glory? A lot of people believe that when I make a mistake, when I do wrong, that God is finished with me. You see, that's the biggest lie from the enemy. We all will make mistakes. We all will fail. As Christians, that is the one thing that I'm certain of, that we will fail, we will make mistakes as believers. As human beings, people in the world, they fail. The only difference is that people in the world, when they fail, people aren't criticizing them. But when people in the church fail, our very own is there to criticize us. Our very own is there ready to pull us down. Imagine the world is more loving and kind to its own than our own people. A lot of people don't take time out to be in God's house. On Sunday is when they find everything else to do except to serve God faithfully. I'm telling you brothers and sisters, we definitely live in the last day. I was talking to a brother yesterday and he was telling me, look at all the sin that is running rampant in this world. It has gotten to a point where people are believing the most foolish things. They're so ignorant in their belief in simple common sense and logics they lack these days. People that have gone to universities, you'll find that the farmers are smarter than them. Their parents spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to give them a proper education, but they can't define what a man or what a woman is. What has the church been doing? We have chosen, when people do wrong, when people sin, we choose to say, you know what, it's probably, you know, that's what they identify as. The world that we live in, every time we sin and we do wrong, instead of correcting us, instead of finding some form of solution to our pain and our suffering, they're so willing to just cover up. The Bible says, those that cover your sins, you will never prosper. If you choose to cover up your wrong this morning, if you choose to cover up your faults and your failures, you will never prosper this morning. So instead, we must turn to God. We must turn to the guidance of the Lord Jesus to bring us out of every pain, out of every suffering. How can we have the guidance of God? A lot of people, they will call you all week and talk about God. A lot of people, they pray and they talk for their actions. Come on. How can God bless people that only talk? You see, nowhere in the scriptures you will find anybody being blessed by God that only talked about something. When God gave Jonah a word to give to the people, he decided to run. You see, when God gives you a word, you got to do something with it. If God has given to you a word that you will be talented and you will be gifted, you will be a man of God, a woman of God, somebody that will be successful in business. Think about this. Receiving dreams and vision of doing well in business but refusing to do anything at all. To sit there and idle all your days. To constantly waste your time with people that have no vision. You see, I'm very careful of the type of people that I connect myself with. If I connect myself with people that don't have vision, you see the thing about vision is that you've got to learn to walk alone. You've got to learn to be by yourself. The problem with this world that we live in, everybody want to buddy up. Everybody want to be together. If they're dancing on one foot, they, they want you to dance on one foot. It has come to a point now where the world and the church, you can't even tell the difference. The same things that the world does, the church does. I was talking to a brother and he said, Joel, I've been praying and trusting God for a godly young lady. So I said, brother, continue to pray, continue to seek after God's face. Soon enough, 
He found somebody in his church and he started talking to her. After a couple of months, I decided to ask him, so how is it going? He says, you know what, Joel? She isn't the one for me. I said, why is that? He said, you know what? She isn't what I had, what I had in mind. I said, brother, I understand exactly what you're saying. They don't walk around like if they need attention. They live according to scripture and understood exactly what this brother was telling me because I too used to think like that. You can't be hypocrites, come on. I used to think like that as a young man. But then if you talk to older folks, they will tell you that beautiful curves will soon become like Guyana speed bumps. So don't worry with that. Let your focus not be on the curves and the edges, the looks and appearance because it all fades. This goes for both men and women. You see, sometimes God bless you with a godly person. And when you look at it, it, it's not to your liking. Because the things of God is much different from the things of the world. The problem why the church has become the same as the world is because they have the same mindset. They think the same way. They look at the same things. So when God sends you somebody that is fully clothed, somebody that is gifted, Somebody that is smart, somebody that is talented, oh, I don't want that. I used to be like that. Let me tell you, you can date the cutest girl, all these Instagram girls, but soon enough I learned that all they have to offer is their looks and their appearance and the way that they dress. But as you put away childish things, like Paul said, Paul says, when I was a child, I did childish things. But now that I'm a man, I must put away childish things. A lot of grown men haven't put away their childish things as yet. When we see sin and we see the wrong things in our lives, do we choose to cover them up? We all have heard the expression of hitting rock bottom or being between a rock and a hard place. Some of us are currently there. Some of us have gone through that process. You see, but rock bottom teaches you an important lesson this morning. You see, when you hit rock bottom, it causes you to reconsider all the choices and decisions that you've made. It really causes you to sit back and think. The reason why the church has been beaten up so much is because they don't learn their lesson. Rock bottom teaches you that you must build on a firm foundation. When you hit rock bottom, don't cry about it, brother. When you hit rock bottom, don't start worrying but use that solid foundation to build up on it. Come on. You see, the reason why we fall time after time is because we have placed things into our lives that God don't want. God will not build on something that is not firm. God will not build on your words. God will not build on your thoughts and the things that you feel. He will only build upon His Word. God does not trust in any man or any woman. He trusts in Himself. So we as Christians must develop the attitude and the mindset of Christ. So this means I'm not going to trust in any person. I'm not going to trust in any man or any woman. No matter how great they are, I am going to choose to trust in Jesus Christ. Because he is the one thing that never fails. No matter how great and mighty a man or woman is, they fail. They make mistakes. I was really thinking about David when I look and examine the life of David he did so much wrong you can't even count them on your fingers this man sinned and did wrong but yet David was called a man after God's own heart then I look at Saul and his life was completely different he was chosen to be king he was a different man you know when we look at David's life he had problems in his own home the man after God's own heart, his own son used to try to kill him to get his kingdom. When you look at Saul's life, Saul's son Jonathan loved him until death. In fact, when Saul died, so did his son right beside him. Saul, if you look at the scriptures, you will never find any problem with Saul and his wife, Saul and his children. But you look at David, he had problems with his son. He had problems with his wives. But the only difference is, is that when Saul did wrong, he told the prophet, don't take the kingdom from me. 
But every time David did wrong, he says, Lord, take the kingdom, take the money, take the wealth, but don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Come on, nobody's listening this morning. A lot of people, a lot of Christian people, Lord, don't take the house from me. Don't take the car, don't take the finances. We've been asking the Lord and we've been saying the wrong thing. What is more important than houses and cars is the Holy Spirit. You see, if you fully don't understand that you haven't trusted the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God tells you to do something and it's so difficult. I remember preaching my first sermon and my Sunday school teacher said, you're probably not called to preach. I don't know where he's at, but I stayed faithful through my mistakes, through my faults. I got to listen to this dude tell me, you're not called to preach among a whole bunch of people sitting down and that's his topic. That was supposed to be a man that lead me and encouraged me to preach God's word. But he said, Joel, you're not called to preach. But I stayed faithful. I remember coming home and looking myself in the mirror and said, Joel, you'll never preach again. That's why we must be very careful of the words we as believers speak over the lives of our others. It took me a little while. I've come to the conclusion that I can't let this man's word over me affect me for the rest of my life. If I had chosen to let those words take full effect over my life, I would not have been here today. He's probably in some corner some way, wasting his life, doing nothing. But instead, when we choose to rely on God's word, when everybody else comes against you, even your very own, even the people that you eat and you drink with, when they come against you, it is important that you don't worry with them. When they discourage you, don't worry about them. Whatever they are telling you right now, whatever negative voices that are saying to you that you will never accomplish anything. You'll never become successful. You'll never become great. Your parents were failures. Your grandparents were failures. So you're bound to be a failure. Do not believe what those voices are telling you today. Do not listen to voices that says you were born in poverty, sickness and disease and you're going to live the rest of your life in hardship. One man said it's better to die fighting than living on my knees. Are you willing to fight for what you believe in? Or do you walk around feeling inferior and weak this morning? You see the God that we, we serve is not just a God that is of the strong and mighty. He's also the God of those that are weak and inferior. Those people that got faults. You see, some of the greatest men in Bible history, they had faults. They had flaws. When we look at Zacchaeus, he used to rob the people. We look at Peter, he cursed at a woman because she recognized him as one of, of Jesus' disciples. Before God could have used Abraham, he had to call him out from among the people that he was living with. You see, that's something that's so important this morning. In order for God to use you, you've got to come out from among the people that you're living with. From among the mindset of these people. If everybody in your home, when something goes wrong, you're ready to believe and go to the Obia man. Abraham's relatives were idol worshippers. So God can't bless you in sin. God can't bless you in idol worshipping. If you trust in Jesus, you've got to throw away your gods. You've got to throw away your pictures of your gods and your little ornaments. If you want Jesus to move in your life, you've got to give over yourself completely to Christ. Because he's not blind. He's not a God that doesn't see. He's not a God that stays in whatever position they made him. The Bible says, heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. He's a God that, that is omnipresent. He's here, there, and everywhere. He's with us right now, and He's with somebody that is going through the darkest time. He's here with us, and He's there with somebody that, is, that has gone through abuse, defeat, pain, and suffering. Somewhere in the world, somebody is crying because they are being oppressed, and He's there with them. You see, some gods can only stay where you put them, but the God that we serve, come on. He can be here, and by the time you get home, to your house that you left in fight and arguments, he's there with you. He's the God that brings the peace, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 
A lot of people lately been asking me, so when are you getting married? When are you getting married, Joel? Are you getting old in age? You're getting gray hair in your head. I just don't want to rush into anything. I'd rather live in peace alone than... I don't even say the rest. The reason why I haven't jumped and gotten married to just anybody is because I have to work on myself. You see, growing up, I used to fall asleep at nights listening to men like Miles Monroe and different preachers. And they'll tell you before you get married and stuff like that, there's things that you have to put in place in your life. T.D. Jake says, you're born a male, but you must become a man. It is something that you must become. You see, the standard for a man in the world and the definition of a man in the world is just once you can get somebody pregnant. Brother, I can do that with my eyes closed. That is the easiest thing to do. Come on, we got to be honest or we're going to be hypocrites. If that is the standard of being a man, then the standard is so low. But I'm not up to that standard. That standard is too low. If you can do something with your eyes closed and get it done, it's not something good. You're not the smartest. That's why we got a bunch of dummies walking around acting like men. They choose not to provide for their families. They choose not to pray and seek God's face with them. They choose to respond in ignorance and in anger when something goes bad. They beat and they abuse their wives. And you read about them in the news. You see, we as Christians, we've got a new standard as men and women. And it's all to the standard of the Word of God. First, you've got to learn to be led by God. In order to be a man of God, you've got to spend time with people. So when you're grown and you want to go on vacation and you want to do something else, you've got to have a heart for the people. So it's not just about getting up here and putting on cameras and preach. Get the spotlight on you and that's it. You've got to have a heart. A lot of people want to do God's will, but they don't have the heart. You see, Jesus Christ didn't go to the cross because he felt like it. Imagine that. Imagine a Jesus Christ that walked with his cross. He carried his cross up the Calvary. And he decided, you know what, I don't even feel like doing this. And he turned down and came. Imagine a Christ that lives in his feelings. When people were hungry, he didn't say, man, that is their problem. Jesus Christ throughout his life and throughout his ministry demonstrated a heart for the people. When they were hungry, the disciples said, send them away. But Jesus said, you feed them. Take the little that you have and you multiply it and you give to them. One man was telling me that he was enjoying a $70,000 steak the other day. I said, brother, that's good for you. He said, this is what success feels like. I said, brother, that's really good for you. But never in my life, no matter how rich I become, will ever eat a $70,000 steak. Because there are more people around me that can enjoy a meal out of that. So if success is eating your $70,000 steak and the people around you suffer, then you're a failure. You're not a true success. Come on. This is how the world teaches us to operate. The world teaches us to operate is just for me, myself, and I. But Christ does not work like that. Christ have other people in mind. We as believers must have other people in mind. At this time in Israel's history, they were being oppressed by the Midianites. Over time, Gideon found himself not living in a fancy house on the hilltop. The Midianites would come into Israel when it's harvest time. When the Israelites have done all the work and preparation. They plowed the fields and sown seeds and watered it and allowed it to grow. Then is when the Midianites would come and devour everything. Take away their livestock. All the fruits of their hard labor. They would take away and they would burn everything to the ground. At this time in Israel's history. They hid in caves. God found Gideon, a weak and inferior man hiding in a cave. A man that was defenseless. A man that was hopeless. He couldn't protect his own family. He couldn't protect himself. God found this inferior man in a cave and he said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. I'm sure even Gideon was 
was surprised. Don't you see I'm a weak man? Don't you see I'm a failure? Don't you see that I've fallen from grace and I am a man that's full of mistakes and done so much wrong? But God calls him a mighty man of valor. The reason is because God sees the potential inside of you when you don't even see it. When your mothers and fathers don't see your potential, God sees it inside of you. Over the years, so many pastors, so many grown people, they will encourage me. They'll tell me what's right and what's wrong. And I can choose to be arrogant. I can choose to be so foolish and not listen to older people. But I've learned that they've walked this very road that I've gone down. Pain gives you a memory of what not to do. This world has a way of finding a position. If you don't want to take up your place in this life, the world will assign a place for you. So if you don't push yourself to be a godly man, a man that is talented and gifted, a businessman, a doctor, a teacher, a lawyer, whatever it is, if you don't push yourself to be it, the world will assign a position and a job title for you. And here's the thing, the world always looks out for themselves. They don't, they're not gonna give you any proper position. They're gonna put you to pick up the garbage. They're gonna put you to be the vagrant and drunkards. We as grown folks, do we correct our own ways? Do we choose to cover up our sins, cover up our wrongdoing, our temptations and our addictions? Do we cover them up? Or do we choose to ask God to intervene in our life? Do we really ask God to come and to reason with us? You see, God can have a conversation with you. He has it through His Word. And when you've grown spiritually, you've given the ability to speak with God. He gives you dreams and vision to encourage you, to uplift you. But do you spend time with the Lord Jesus today? But God is forever faithful. When we fall into hardship, when we fall into sickness, pain and suffering, when we fall into temptations and our wrongdoing, God will not help us until we make a move. Come on, if you can just grab the very thing that pull you down and lift yourself back up. Only then God can move in your life. Only then God can touch you and heal you and restore you. A lot of people are delivered from their wrongs. Delivered from their sins. One person told me, Joel, it's like every time I sin, my sin is becoming bigger. The sin is growing on me. And I said, that's absolutely right. Because I know people that started out with a little white light. And now they tell lies that even the blind can see. Sin causes you to want all the wrong things in your life. Now if you're wondering what sin is, sin is anything that lives outside of the will of God. Sin is everything that is not found in His Word. Things that you feel, things that you're being told, voices that you're listening to that do not align with the Word of God. So if a voice tells you that you're going to be a failure, and you'll never amount to anything in your life. That's not found in His Word. So I know to rule that out of my life because it's not God's Word. It will be foolish to accept all the terrible things that people say and that the enemy says about us. Choose to listen to God's voice. You see, we all will fall as Christians and as human beings we will fall. That is one thing I'm so certain of. But what's important is that we get back up. A true failure is somebody that refuses to get back up. Are you right now in a place where you refuse to get back up? Out of poverty, out of financial situation, out of sickness and pain and problems in your marriage, in your home, in your addiction, do you refuse to get back up this morning? If you remain there, you're bound to become a failure. But if you choose to hold on to somebody, the Bible says he is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Come on. He's not just the God of those that are strong and mighty. He's, those, he's a God of those that fail and make mistakes this morning. He's a God of the broken and the hurting. No matter what you are and where you're at in this life right now, God has the power to shape your life. To bring you back to your feet this morning. 